I'll bet you thought I forgot about the astronomy lesson. No, I didn't. Where does the sun get its power from? In the 1890s, scientists believed that the big questions in science had all been answered, that there were no new discoveries to be made. In 1897, A.A. A. Michelson actually said that the future role of science was simply to add decimal places to results already obtained. Oh, there were a few things that bothered them, like the age of the Earth or the sun's power supply, but most scientists felt that those were minor issues, just little quibbles, that would eventually get resolved with time. By the early 1800s, physicists had worked out that if the sun were powered by normal chemical means, like fire, then it would have enough fuel for perhaps 10,000 years. But geologists who had been studying sedimentary rock layers were convinced that the earth was at least 100 million years old. And since they had impressions of plants in those old fossils, they figured that the sun must have been shining for at least 100 million years. In 1887, Lord Kelvin solved this problem by showing that the sun could derive its power from its own gravitational collapse. An object as massive as the sun need only contract by 50 meters per century in order to maintain the observed energy output. For an object the size of the sun, that meant it could power itself for several hundred million years. But by that time, the biologists and the geologists of the day were demanding even more time. Darwin was not willing to accept that a hundred million years was enough time for life to evolve, and the geologists were finding ever deeper and deeper layers of rock. So while Lord Kelvin had solved the problem of a hundred million years, now the biologists and the geologists were demanding billions of years. This standoff was eventually broken by a set of happy accidents that began in 1895. In that year, Wilhelm Röntgen accidentally discovered x-rays. He had been experimenting with very powerful electric discharges, and he noticed that a faint shimmer came from some phosphorescent material that he had coincidentally set nearby. Rentgen quickly showed that these x-rays were very penetrating. He could fog photographic plates that were wrapped tightly in construction paper. He was even able to take the, a picture of the bones of his own hand. A year later, Antoine-Henri Becquerel decided to experiment with phosphorescence. He felt that phosphorescence was a source of x-rays. So he took material that would glow after being exposed to sunlight and he put it next to photographic plates that were wrapped tightly with construction paper. If those plates were fogged, then the phosphorescing material must be a source of x-rays. One of the phosphorescent materials he used was crystals of potassium uranyl sulfate, a compound containing uranium. And it worked like a champ, too. Every time he put this, these crystals out in the sun with a tightly wrapped photographic plate, the photographic plate got fogged. He was even able to create silhouettes of metallic objects that were placed between the crystals and the photographic plates. So, Becquerel was right. The phosphorescing materials were producing x-rays. But then, the weather turned sour on him. The sun went behind clouds and it stayed there for several days. He had an experiment all ready to go. He had the crystals and the plate, but Without the sun to make the crystals glow, it was useless. So he took the experiment, the crystals and the plate, and he put them in a dark drawer, waiting for the sun to shine again. Days later, Becquerel removed the experiment from the drawer, but then he did something unexpected. He developed the photographic plate. What made him do that? The crystals had never been exposed to the sun. They hadn't glowed. There was no way they could produce x-rays. Why did he develop that photographic plate? We will likely never know, but when he did, the results were astonishing. The plate was fogged. Somehow, 
x-rays were being produced by those crystals even though they hadn't been exposed to the sun. And those x-rays were penetrating the construction paper that wrapped the photographic plate and fogging the photographic plate. Becquerel tried it again and again. He repeated the experiment over and over. And every time the photographic plate was fogged by these crystals, the x-rays coming out of these crystals would penetrate cardboard or construction paper. He could make silhouettes of metal objects. There was power coming out of these crystals. But that power wasn't coming from the sun as he had first thought. No, that power was simply coming out of the crystals. And that implied something very disturbing. How long had these crystals been emitting x-rays at this level? The only reasonable implication was that they'd been emitting x-rays since they formed, but that would have been millions of years. Where was that power coming from? The amount of energy was staggering. Becquerel had discovered radioactivity quite by accident. And with it, he discovered the immense energies contained in nuclear reactions. He didn't know it at the time, but he had also uncovered the power source of the sun.